If you're looking to qualify for a conventional or FHA loan and your income's just not enough, maybe you've got a co-signer, your spouse, your uh, significant other who's going to be moving in with you and they have enough income combined with yours. The problem is you can't put them on the loan. Maybe there's a credit issue. Maybe you're applying for a program that has a maximum amount of income. And if you both go on the loan, you make too much, but you by yourself, you make too little. I have a really good solution that's going to work for some people in the right situation that will allow you to get additional help from a family member to help you qualify for a mortgage without having them be on the mortgage. And it's really simple, but I need to explain to you exactly how it works. And what it is, is it's using trust income. Now, trust income was designed for billionaires, the, you know, Steve, uh, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs of the world who have huge amounts of money and they have gobs of money in a family trust that they pay out to their children and their children's children. And there is a rule that allows us to use trust income to qualify for a mortgage. And you can have a family member set up a trust to pay you trust income and you can use it to qualify for a mortgage. So it's really simple how it works, but there's multiple steps. I'm explaining to you everything you need to know about how to make this work so that I can help you get qualified for the mortgage you're trying to do and not have to add that family member as a co-signer, but have them help you in being able to get the additional income you need to qualify. So first and foremost, that family member has to have a significant amount of assets, a significant amount of money in the bank, because a trust account is money that has a big nest egg. Now, big is relative, but it has a big enough nest egg that they're going to pay you out of that nest egg every single month going forward. How does the numbers work? Very simply, they have to have three years worth of the amount they're paying you in their trust account. Now, John, what do you mean in their trust account? A trust is simply a, an estate planning tool. So there's something called a living trust, which honestly, everybody should have. Now, I'm not an attorney. I don't play one on TV, even though I'm on video right now. But the truth is that a trust is a tool that anybody and everybody should have because it's really important if something happens to you and you pass away, what happens to everything else in your life? If you don't have a trust, even if you have a will, if you don't have a trust, then even your will has to go to the court for them to execute the intentions that you laid out in your will. But a trust skips court or skips the probate process. So anybody who has any assets, you should have a trust. Now you can go to an attorney and get a trust and it might cost two, three, four thousand dollars to create a trust. Depending upon how complicated your situation is, you can often use a a different industry called a legal document specialist. It's essentially a paralegal, but to be a paralegal, you have to be uh, working under a realtor. So if you're licensed as a paralegal or trained as a paralegal, but you don't work under a realtor, then technically you're a legal document specialist. They can't give advice, but they can create all of the paperwork. And you can usually get a legal document specialist to create a trust for you for under a thousand dollars. Okay. Once you have that trust, what that means for you from an estate planning perspective is that you your trust owns all of your assets. You have to create bank accounts in the name of the trust. Now, you own the trust, or in this case, maybe your family member, but whoever the, the person is who created the trust for themselves, they own the trust. The trust owns their home. The trust owns their bank accounts. The trust owns their stock accounts so that when they pass away, the ownership doesn't have to change. The trust still owns everything, but the trust says who's in charge of the trust once you're gone. And so that person can immediately take over actions with your assets because the trust is in charge. Now that's what a trust is. How does this apply here? Your family member either has a trust already or needs to create a trust. If you need a recommendation to an attorney or legal document specialist, I can help you with that. But the step one is they have to create a trust. Step two, they have to have a bank account with the name of the trust. In other words, it's the trust that owns that money. Now, this is a good thing. Even if they weren't helping you from an income qualification perspective, it's a good thing they put the bank account in the trust. Because just because you have a trust, if that bank account is owned by you, 
then that bank account has to follow the normal rules if something happens to you. It's only things that are owned in the trust that follow the process of skipping court, skipping probate when you pass away. All right. Now, in that trust checking account or savings account or investment account, they have to put their money and they can technically pay you one thirty-sixth of that money. So if they have uh, $36,000 in that account, then technically we could have a payment made from them to you of $1,000 a month that I can count as qualifying income for your loan. They have to make one payment to you at the time that we are in escrow uh, so we can start the process. We can start the trust payments at the time we go into escrow and they make that one payment to you and we have to have them write a letter. And the letter says that they are the trustee of that trust, that that trust is paying you $1,000 a month and that we have to prove that there's at least 36 times that amount in the trust. That's all I need to qualify you for the mortgage. And I can count that amount of money as income. Now, the person paying you the trust money cannot be a borrower on the loan. So you cannot use this if the person paying the trust is a borrower. But if maybe your spouse is not on the loan, maybe you took them off the loan because the program you're doing has income thresholds and you make too much money together. You take your spouse off the loan. You open up a trust in your spouse's name. Your spouse opens a bank account in the trust's name, and then you write a check from your spouse's trust to you with a letter saying, hey, we're going to pay this uh, amount monthly. Here's the, the first payment. We have proof of that it was paid, and we have proof that there's at least three years in the account. Now, oftentimes we work the numbers backwards, and we say, hey, to qualify for this mortgage, you're short $2,000 a month in income. You can get a co-signer. Now that co-signer, if they have to be added to the mortgage and the program has to allow co-signers and a lot of loan programs don't allow co-signers, but if they do great, you can add them, but it isn't as simple as them simply having $2,000 a month in income because we also have to subtract their debt. We have to subtract what they pay for their living expenses. And we have to look at their credit if they're co-signing. But this solution says they don't need to worry about, I don't need to worry about that person's credit. I don't need to worry about, I don't even need to worry about if that person has stable income. All I care about is if that person has assets. So for a lot of people, this isn't going to work because you don't have a family member that has a sizable amount of money in the bank. But there's a lot of people who have a grandparent, a parent, an aunt or uncle who planned on helping them out anyway. Maybe they were going to help you <clears throat> with down payment money and give you a big check for down payment money. Maybe they were going to give you an inheritance when they pass away and they can start giving you that inheritance now. So there's a lot of ways to look at this, but the steps are simple. Identify a family member who has money in the bank. And if they have do not have a living trust, they have to create one. That's step one. Let me know if you need help contacting an attorney or a legal document specialist to create the trust in their name. Then they must have a bank account in the name of the trust. So that's step two, get a bank account in the name of the trust. Then step three, when we are in escrow, we will have them write the first check to you at that time. So they have to have a checking account that they can write a check out of. They'll write you the first check. We prove that that first check was paid. We prove that there's at least three years worth or 36 times that amount in the trust account. A lot of people have significantly more than that. They're not giving you all of their money, but we have to prove that there's enough money in there that this can last at least three years. And then they write that letter. It's a super simple process that I can utilize to help you qualify for the mortgage when you don't want to get a cosigner or your cosigner doesn't qualify because of credit or too much debt or stability of income issues or the program that you're using doesn't allow for co-signers. This is a huge opportunity to help you qualify for a mortgage that is legal, appropriate, and I'm an expert at making it happen. So please give me a call. Uh, if you want to reach out to me, you can, I'm gonna put it right here. Uh, you can get the process started right up here. So let me give you a smaller version. All right, perfect. So if you have questions and you wanna uh, talk with me, Click that QR code right there, download my mobile app. You can communicate with me directly through the mobile app. You can also uh, call me directly, or you can start the application process by using that link as well. 
So I really look forward to taking great care of you. Please reach out if you have any questions and make it a great day. Bye-bye.